thought I'd just go through some of um, my chipping fundamentals um, and the reasons for those. So if we start on the left hand side and we just look up set up, ball position, um, sometimes coaches will really teach the ball to be very far back in the stance and you know what's the correct alignment of the feet or the, the angle of the feet. So if you look at me, I'm trying to get the ball right through the middle of my ankles. Um, this is for my standard shot. For a slightly lower than normal shot, I'll move the ball back a little bit more. Uh, for a slightly higher shot, I'll move the ball more forward. Um, I don't t tend to turn the right foot overly in. That's really just sort of perpendicular to our target. But my left foot, I, I turn out a little bit more than normal. Now, really the purpose of this, this will stop me... Um, my body moving back too much in the in the downswing and reduce the risk of me hitting the ground before the ball. Um, I think really the key to good connection is less actually the orientation of the ball relative to the feet, but more where the ball is related relative to our sternum. And that's off partly determined by where our nose is and then our C7, which is the bump on the back of our neck. Now, one of the first great short game instructors, Paul Runyon, used to talk about the suspension point of the swing. And that's really that line running right through our body there um, and up through that bump or our bone in the back of our neck. So if we can keep that in front of the ball throughout our action... Wherever really our suspension point is at impact, that's where the club will strike the ground. There are some other variables involved in that, but if you think about that as the main constant, I think you're going to be pretty close to consistent striking. So you can see that I've set that maybe one, two centimetres in front of the ball where I want the club to reach its, its bottom. Now, as I make the stroke... I'm actually going to try and now move that centre, if anything, a little bit more forward of the ball. So you can see I've actually moved maybe one centimetre forward. And now I'm going to try and keep it there. We don't want any movement back. So what that's going to enable me, I don't overly need to lean the shaft through impact to, to get good contact. I can actually throw the club head. So what I mean by that, I can release the club head very early or what often be called a, a slight flicking action you know, and it's certainly not a breakdown and a flick and a stop of the body but I can release the shaft a lot because my nose, my sternum, my belt buckle and, and then the bone on the back of my neck is in front of the ball so now my first contact point is where the ball is and my second one is now going to be after the ball and again a real telltale sign of um, what we're looking for is for the shaft to create a vertical position about two centimetres, three centimetres in front of the ball. Um, if we've still got some angle there at that point, let's put some lines on for you. So if, for instance, we had some angle at that point, the hands have actually led the club head too much through impact. If we had the opposite angle going on and the head had led the hands too much, then we've actually released slightly too early and our action is likely to be, be too shallow. And then from this position here, we really want to keep the lower body moving and turning. So at my last sort of fundamental I'm going to share with you is, I think it's very important, it, is this right leg to keep in a, passive position so you're going to see with me this right leg is not going to move too much as I make my action I'm going to tend to turn my chest over my legs for a stable lower body now again so long as I keep the belt buckle and the and the nose or the sternum in front of the ball um, I'm going to be able to make solid 
contact. Um, from looking at it from the right hand side, I'm trying to bend from my hips, weights running through the balls of my feet. I would say the one constant that I've seen in all great chippers from Tiger was to Sebi Ballesteros to Bernard Langer to Alatha Bell is shaft plane. You will see very few good chippers get the club head under plane or under this shaft plane line. So what we're looking for is where the club head will pretty much track up that line to maybe a fraction outside and back down that line. Now I feel very confident if you can, one, follow the advice that I mentioned from front on regarding your suspension point, and two, get that club head travelling on plane, you're really giving yourself a great chance of creating consistent contact. You know, the last point I'd like to make is just be aware of where the club face is throughout the swing. If we start to get the club face looking down too much, um, we increase the likelihood of the leading edge digging in. Um, and even though maybe the strike points after the ball, the club head will feel like it digs in too much. So I think really anywhere in terms of the face, depending on the shot type, from matching our spine angle, which is kind of further mine is more similar to, to a point where the club head looks in a more vertical position, so where maybe it's in this point, that's really the that sort of V I've created there is where I like to see the face. I think anywhere in that phase, um, you're going to be able to create successful chips. But um, you know, I, I hope my points here allow you to make more consistent contact. If we can get the co uh, contact consistent, then you can start to control trajectory and control the distance.